Uh, if we uh, look at the book of Genesis in the Bible, which is, um, I think, mistranslated by the Christians as the creation of a physical universe by a supernatural being, it doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, the story is much older than the invention of physics by Aristotle. Uh, back then, people lived in a dream world. They know that the world that you experience is a dream that uh, is somehow in, has invariances in it and is intersubjective, but it's a representation that uh, can change when your beliefs change and the way in which your perception works change. And so the objects of that dream are being created. And they're not created by uh, some kind of supernatural being, but they are created by your consciousness. And this story is, uh, is um, probably more than 3,000 years old, has at some point been uh, in, uh, introduced in the uh, religious scriptures uh, of uh, the Hebrews. and. Uh, then uh, being translated into some kind of chant, so you get the six-day structure and so on. But I think it might easily be a six-stage theory of how uh, the mental organization works in the mind of an infant. So it starts out with um, the notion that consciousness is the prerequisite that it forms for anything else in the mind before the structure of the world model is created. And then it creates dimensions of difference, and then it separates world model and mental stage, Builds the 3D world with the plane of the ground and populates solid and liquid volumes, creates objects and categories, and uh, uh, makes it invariant against changes in lighting and temporal development. It models agency and creates a personal self. And so, if you look at these individual states, basically it starts out with this creative spirit, consciousness, hovering over the substrate. And the world is without form and void and to overflow. And then it creates a boundary between the world model and the sphere of ideas that in this text are called uh, heaven and earth, or heaven and world. And this sphere of ideas is what Descartes calls res cogitans, with this lower sphere, this a space in which thoughts and uh, emotions and so on happen. And the other one is the stuff in space, res extensa. That's our world model. It's the game and it attracts reality. And this boundary is quite fundamental in our own mind. And it's interesting that unlike Western philosophy, we right now recognize that this dualism is not a dualism in the physical universe, in the substrate reality, but it's a dualism inside of our own mind. Right? We have these two types of representation, the stuff and space representation, in which we have a world model that we can touch, that integrates over our perception, and the space of ideas that is asynchronous to it, where you can hold a thought for as long as you want and imagine something independently of what's currently being perceived. The next thing it does, it is able to create contrast. And we now know it's probably some kind of new velocity later. The intensity of this contrast is associated with brightness, with the color of the day, and the flatness of the contrast with dark, with uh, the absence of light or uh, data. And now we have uh, that continuous dimension. Using dimensions, you can create arbitrary objects in the embedding space. Right? And the first object that are created is space. So the first space that it builds is by combining two dimensions, you get the plane, and the plane gets associated with the ground. Um, infants start thinking in 2D mostly. So observe this when you see in during development that infants typically have difficulty to build towers, and not because they can't physically, because they cannot really reason in 3D yet. So initially they really like to arrange stuff on the ground. And then at some point they can conceptualize 3D and the way in which objects are represented in 3D, and at this point, this is sufficient to deal with the entire photonic space and the geo interactive. And then we create liquids and solids, and from them we um, build objects. And we learn how light changes over the time, and objects remain invariant against it. Uh, we discover the rich light sources, and then we create all the plants and all the animals and give them all their names. And it's all this population of the game engine. It's not the creation of a physical universe. Just, these are not physical entities. These are categories that we form by interacting with the world. And then uh, we also uh, realize that the uh, purpose of the exercise is to build a control model for the interaction between an organism and its environment. So we create a model of that organism and its environment and put it into the simulated world. And we find that for the first uh, two to three years, uh, infants typically refer to themselves in the third person. And I suspect it's not because I is such a complicated word or because they never hear anybody using it, but it's because they don't perceive themselves in the first person. They perceive this person as something that is inside of them. It's, being, it's a model of that person that's being generated in their mind. And we notice that there's a dramatic change in personality. Once at a certain age, we, we drop into being mostly in the third person, where we no longer realize that we are creating reality and dreaming it. 
but we uh, basically experience ourselves as inhabitants of this reality. And uh, we had this weird childhood amnesia, and I suspect it might be related to the fact that once we conceptualize ourselves in the first person, we re-index our memories. And when you have children, you will notice this thing that they have perfectly fine memories during their first year of life and second year of life, and they can remember in their second year of life what they did in their first year of life. But somehow, after their third year of life, they forgot everything that was before. It's pretty weird, and it's uh, interesting invariance in most children. And I think that's basically associated our personal self with this conscious first-person perspective. And once I stumbled on reading Genesis in this way, it made total sense, and I could not unsee it anymore, because this original interpretation that uh, after uh, God uh, creates the world, creates humans in God's own image, it will not really look like anything that hovers over uh, the face of the waters and uh, makes light and darkness, right? And it uh, creates it as man and woman. And then I think what happens is that this outer mind creates another spirit, another consciousness, that is uh, another model of being. It is put inside of this God and thinks of itself as man and woman. It thinks of itself as a human being that experiences itself as a person. That is, I think, expressed in here. And I think it makes total sense to put this text first to explain our own nature to us and our own way of experiencing reality and relating to it. 